So, I've developed this theory about glomming together of antisocial personalities and, and the very first instance that I knew about it, there were two people who had been friends all their lives and they both were antisocial personalities and they would they were both telepaths and they would make um, plans on a uh, Desai in the Sky plans that is uh, to to like um, molest school children at the same time even though they were separated from each other by you know hundreds of miles a thousand miles and uh, so they would because they were very psi negatively psi they would they would do that together, and that's what you would make, and that would make the power of their mind control double, because they would one would be, you know, shoving his energy into the other one, the, the negative energy into the other one for mind control. It, it, in other words, they re reinforced each other or resonated with each other. That might be true. So, but anyway, there's this new um, instance that's that's similar, but has its distinct uh, separate qualities. And that has to do with a family of boys, all with the same first and last name, but each with a separate middle name, right? This is just a, a sigh in the sky story. And all of these boys uh, had the inherent tendency to uh, enjoy uh, the act of killing, maybe rape, but definitely killing. They just loved killing. And they had very volatile tempers. Okay, all of them, the whole family. So, so here's the theory. It's very out there. Um, many of them, when they got older, they were risk-taking, all of them. And many of them, when they got older, moved into professions that were illegal. And um, some very violently inclined. And so... Uh, they all decided on the basis of their childhood names to pick one first and last name for all of them. So they were like a, a gang of young people that that were like doing the antisocial personality thing, right? And making, doing that ill-got gain thing, right? And they, so on the basis of their childhood of having all the, fir the same first and last name in, different middle name, they picked another name, a very misleading name, first and last, for all of them had that name. It was a name that nobody really has. It's, it was very uncommon. So they picked it out for them and them alone. And uh, the, they kept their same birth middle names, which was really their distinguishing feature, right, uh, from childhood. So, you see. So, so if you were to look online at one of the background alert things, you would find this this new first and last name had a, like a listing of 60 or 90 um, counts of like breaking the law, you know, that convictions. And so, but in different states of the United States, right? <laughs> so, so if you were to look in different states of the United States, you might find someone with the middle name that was listed for this fictional character who was a member of that family, right? And who did those particular things in that state. Everybody had a state, say, a good state that they referred. So, um, so this family, like the duo that I told you about in initially, because of the the, the family characteristics, the the tendency to become angry very quickly, if, like a ferocious kind of anger, the desire to kill and maybe rape, and um, and the tendency to risk taking, they when it, they found that one or the other of them from time to time was about to perform that act, kill and maybe rape, right? And when that happened, the uh, the shadow of the personality of all of the other siblings would converge down upon the one that was doing that act, so that he, he, he attained uh, like 10 times the power of a normal mind control enthusiast. And, uh, and so, so then, uh, near, they were nearly invincible in this regard and uncatchable, as were the duo. It only really takes a duo, and those happen 
apparently quite frequently in the antisocial personality realm because of the fact that they are predators hunting prey and it's an unpopular position from the standpoint of society. So two can watch each other's backs, you know. Anyway, um, and they can also provide extra mind control ability, twice the mind control ability, so as to mind control like all the important people, you know, the law enforcement people, the lawyers, the courts, the, um, let me think, that's all I can think of right now. And so, um, so, but anyway, to get back to the, to the big group, there was one person there that did not like killing, right? And so one of the brothers did not like killing. And he used to think, um, if only all these other people were passed on, then it would be okay and I would, wouldn't have that so much of a tendency to, to do evil acts in the spur of a moment and by being like obsessed by all the other people there. You know, it's like 10 times more than I myself am. And he thought that quite a bit. And I won't say as a consequence of that thought, but eventually the rest of his siblings passed on. So, so what happened then? You know, that's the question. Is it really true? I'm not going to be the one to test it. It's too scary for me. <laughs> but I do have a question. Is it really true that he now only has one-tenth of the prior mind control ability and one-tenth of the pr propensity to evil? Or are the evil shadows of his passed on dead siblings still roaming the earth and jumping on, perhaps in decreased proportion to their living uh, situations? Um, if they are still roaming the earth and, and latching on to him, then over time, as their astral forms deteriorate and their ghostly bodies dissipate and they move on to the mental realms, then uh, he should experience more and more relief from that difficulty. That's what I'm thinking. It'll be interesting to know what's really going to happen. <laughs>